Hello everyone, welcome back to the homestead. If you are new to our channel, I'm Carrie and this is Esther, my daughter, and we both really love gardening. This is the time of year that we're getting our gardens ready. <laughs> and so uh, for us, that means we're doing a lot of work in our kitchen garden, putting in better pathways. So today's video is gonna be all about garden pathways and we're gonna share seven different pathways that we have used and the things that we love about them and the things that we don't love about them. <laughs> so we're gonna give you some pros and cons on different garden pathways. Most of these pathways are very inexpensive. Uh, some are a little more expensive, but will last for a long time. Uh, so let's get into it. So when we first started out gardening, uh, many of our pathways we just left bare and the weeds took over and it became a huge jungle garden <laughs> and that was no fun so we quickly realized the importance of taking the time to put in good garden pathways about our second and third maybe fourth year as well we just used what we could find and we did wood chips and sawdust uh, so what's something good about the wood chips and sawdust Esther Pye? well they're very cheap sometimes they're free and it's easy to pull weeds in them yeah, we live near mills, and so we could get uh, sawdust really cheaply, sometimes free. And then we also have road crews that come through trimming the trees, and we could just get free wood chips that way. So another good thing about the wood chips and sawdust is that you can reuse the material from your pathways and put it back into your beds, depending on what kind of wood chips you get. Some wood chips are not so good for plants, so you have to be careful about that. The biggest downside, I would say, to the wood chips and sawdust is that they harbor ticks. And I don't know yeah. about you, where you're at, but here in Missouri, we have a tick problem. Even with all the animals that we have surrounding our gardens, we still would get ticks in the wood chips in the gardens. Uh, not so much the sawdust, but sometimes they would harbor in the sawdust as well. And then the other big downside is our kitchen garden is on a little bit of a slope and it's at the bottom of a pasture driveway area. And so all of the water when we get heavy rains would flood through our garden and wash away the wood chips, <laughs> wash away the sawdust and carry in a bunch of weed seed. So though it worked better than no pathways, uh, wood chips and sawdust are not something that we're going to continue at this point here on our homestead. All right, so the next pathway that we experimented with was using uh, weed fabric, a weed barrier that was woven. Um, actually, we've used both woven and a biodegradable black fabric, and that's really tidy and nice looking, and it works well the first year, but what's the problem? Well, after the second year, it kind of gets all moved around and around and stuff, and it's really hard to keep in the same place and gets ripped. Yeah, depending on what kind you get, it can be hard to keep in place, but even if you get the really sturdy stuff that stays in place, even just a tiny bit of soil buildup on the top of that black fabric grows weeds. And once those weeds root down in below the fabric, you can't pull them out. It, they're just impossible to get out. Uh, so we have used that in a pinch. Um, our whole front garden actually was covered with weed barrier fabric and that's the only way we were able to grow anything out there. It would have been a weed jungle without it. Yeah. Um, but we are going to be ripping that all out this year and redoing the pathways that have the black fabric. Some people, that's all they use and they pull it up and put it, put it back down fresh every year and it works great for them. Uh, for our situation, it hasn't worked so well. So the last four pathways that we're going to talk about are the pathways that we have chosen to stick with and to use here on our homestead and our gardens. And although some of them have some downsides, we have mostly good things to say about them. So all around our apple tree orchard area, we've been putting in native stone and moss. The good things about that pathway are number one, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, second, it does really help keep the weeds away if you don't have rainwaters bringing seed over the top of it every year like we do. <laughs> We're gonna be putting a cement walkway barrier, um, which you're gonna see us doing some of that work today. But anyway, for those who don't have floodwaters coming through their garden, and you have maybe an orchard area or an area where you've got perennials, moss and rock is a beautiful way to make a pathway. It's free depending on where you live, or maybe you can find friends that have some native stone that you can use. 
it's really nice to walk on with bare feet. Our children love to go barefoot and it's nice to walk on that, huh? Yeah. Nice and soft. The only other downside to the moss and rock pathways has been that some of the rocks, um, at least the rocks that we have in our area, will split and crack. So you kind of have to replace them a uh, little bit here and there. Or you can just put moss in where it cracked. Yeah, when they make new cracks, you can just add more moss. Uh, right now, ours have mostly chickweed growing. Uh, the moss has kind of gone dormant. Uh, but it was really beautiful when the moss was growing in them. So there's lots of different things you can plant in the cracks of rocks, depending on where you live and how much how much sun and shade the area gets. So it just makes a really beautiful, um, inexpensive pathway that's natural and super easy to put together. All we did was put down some old uh, chicken feed bags to help smother out the weeds and then put a small layer of we mixed uh, pea gravel and sand together and then you can set the rocks right into that. Sometimes you put a little bit of dirt in the cracks for the moss to get established, but it's, it's a lot of fun. We really enjoy those pathways. The next pathway is a permanent, uh, never have to pull a weed again, set it and forget it, that's cement. It is by far the most expensive but yeah. um, it can look beautiful, maybe not as natural as other pathways, but still clean and tidy, uh, super easy to maintain. Such a blessing to have the cement that we have in our garden. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we are gonna be doing more cement in certain places. I think it's good to have your main access pathways through your garden in cement and nice and wide so that you can bring wagons and wheelbarrows through and get access to the whole garden through like a center pathway made of cement. Uh, next up is cobblestone pathways. These are not as expensive as cement. You can get by with a lot less cement and th these can be done by hand too. You don't have to bring in a cement truck or anything like that. So we've just been doing a few cobblestone pathways little by little as we can afford it. And we just put gravel down and then we put quickcrete, a layer of quickcrete down. Uh, water that in and then have stone native stones that we set down in place and then put quickcrete all around those stones and water it in again uh, so it's a pretty simple process the only challenge that we've really had with that is some of the rocks do crack as well so you have to be careful what rocks you use you got to make sure you do the crack test <laughs> throw them down on the ground first make sure they're not going to crack on you um, and then hopefully they'll be good to go in the cobblestone pathways. I think cobblestone's probably my all-time favorite right now for garden pathways, um, just for how it looks. It's so beautiful, it's natural, not quite as expensive as other permanent set it and forget it kind of pathways. So we highly recommend cobblestone. And the last pathway we're gonna share with you today that we have experience with is pea gravel. Um, I would say this is another probably second favorite for me. There's not really anything negative about it if you set it up right from the beginning. And so that's a big project we're working on right now. Pea gravel is really inexpensive. We got a trailer full for only $40 and that's going to go a long way in our kitchen garden. We probably will have to get one more load <laughs> to complete the whole kitchen garden. As long as you put down some cardboard or some kind of initial weed barrier that can break down and a good thick layer of pea gravel, it can really keep the weeds out. And the weeds that do grow in the pea gravel, because inevitably they will grow weeds, <laughs> um, the pea gravel is just really easy to pull the weeds out of, huh? Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty soft and easy to dig down and get the weeds out. I would not recommend putting a weed fabric down unless it's biodegradable because you'll have the same issue um, of not being able to get the roots out of the black fabric. So for pea gravel I would just put down cardboard or something like that to initially smother the weeds and that way any weeds that do grow in the future the roots will not be set in fabric <laughs> and you'll be able to just pull them out really easily. Um, so pea gravel also just really looks natural. It's beautiful. It looks clean. Uh, you do have to have some sort of form to contain it, to keep it in place. So there is a little bit more expense than just the pea gravel itself. Thankfully, we've been getting some scrap cutoffs from the local mill. We have some friends that have been bringing that to us and we've been able to purchase the cutoffs for really, really cheap. A lot cheaper than we could get lumber 
at a store. So what else is cool about the pea gravel, Esther Pie? Well, it's really nice to walk on. It's nice on your feet when, if you go barefoot. And the littles really like playing with it. Yeah, the littles love playing, playing with the pea gravel, which could be a downside because you might have pea gravel where you don't want it. But it keeps them really happy for a long time in the garden. All right, so Esther Pie, if you could just pick one or maybe two favorite garden pathways of the ones that we've tried so far, which would they be? Um, probably pea gravel and cobblestone. Cool. <laughs> we, we have the same favorite pathways, huh? Why would you pick those? Well, cobblestone you could just use for places that you, it's just kind of you sit there and you don't have to weed anymore at all. So you can use those kind of for the main places and then pea gravel. It's just really nice to walk on, you know, for just especially curving pathways because it's really hard to do cobblestone in those parts. Yeah. And so. Yeah, that's something that I didn't mention that when you're, when you've got curving pathways, cobblestone, cement, things like that are really hard to put in, but pea gravel. You can curve it however you want. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we are going to actually go get to work now. We did some work yesterday, which I'll show you, and then we're going to be doing some more work um, doing pea gravel pathways in our kitchen garden. a tangly mess there, huh? Wisteria yeah. and the grapevines all tangled in with this fence line that we're taking out so that we can put a pathway along this whole edge of the garden here and prevent all the weeds from growing and and then spreading their seed into our whole garden space. <laughs> How's it coming, Caleb? Pretty good. Pretty good. And that fence off. We've only got a couple posts to pull out, so that's good. It's going to be really nice to have a whole long walkway along this edge here. Not have to weed eat along the whole edge of the garden anymore, huh? Yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be really nice. You guys getting buckets full for us? Nice. Yeah. Good job. Awesome tool right there, guys. Pulls posts out so easily, huh, Caleb? Yeah. <laughs> nice. This pathway here is pretty deep. It's hard to tell on the camera, but it's about eight inches deep, I think. So we're putting a load of just large gravel on the bottom, and then we'll put the pea gravel, and we'll leave about three inches of space on the top for cement eventually. So the cement will go right off our patio here into the garden pathway. Boy, I tell you, hauling buckets of gravel is quite a workout. <laughs> We're almost there. Leaving about three, four inches for the cement. Whenever we can get the cement in here, could be a few years. Now we're using this tamper to kind of tamp it down tight so it's a little easier to walk on. Well, it's coming together out here, guys. It's kind of hard to tell. It's quite messy still, but we're getting some forms in place for this sidewalk along the driveway. We've got some cardboard and feed bags down. We're waiting on some more forming stakes. We've laid out a bed here. We're going to build a bed there as well for perennial flowers and herbs. And we've got some cardboard going this direction. And it's already one o'clock, time for a lunch break. So we're gonna take a break and then hopefully get back out here and finish forming up the walkway along the driveway. We'll probably put down some big gravel and then pea gravel and then put our fence line back up, hopefully before the end of the day. Here's from the other end of the garden. Going back this way, we've got a grapevine and a wisteria here. So we're gonna put a 
poured cobblestone seating area right there and have a pergola for the wisteria and then hopefully we can untangle the grapevine and send it the opposite direction and do a grape arbor along this side of the walkway um, so basically you can walk under the grape arbor along that pathway it's the plan had to pull up a bunch of old black weed fabric that's just a mess here it's um it's filled with weeds just growing right through it got some old cants that have rotted out we're going to get rid of but man look how beautiful all the flowers are the daffodils and the sweet violets are so pretty right now the honeybees are buzzing Oh, look, one of the girls made a little vase and forgot to bring it inside. <laughs> Guys are working on the garden bed. It's going over on the edge of the driveway. They're almost done with it. It's going to be like a horseshoe shape. And I have been over here dumping gravel, trying to get this six by six square here that's for the wisteria pergola level with the upper end of our walkway here it's about five or six inches off from from the walkway down to the lower end over there so we need a lot more gravel i am getting a workout today let me tell you what you doing over here abigail what are you making i'm playing milky Oh, you're pretending you're milking the cow with the <laughs> spray bottle. I like your crown. Thanks. <laughs> Naomi, made it. Naomi made that out of the toy train tracks, huh? Mm -hmm. Cute. Right, guys it's actually day two now of unloading this trailer full of pea gravel we did not get much unloaded yesterday uh, because we had to do a whole lot of work pulling out the fence line that was all tangled with our wisteria and grapevines and then we had to put in a bunch of forms as well you can kind of see there bunch of form work so we still have a little bit of form work to do today but then the rest of the work for today is just gonna be emptying this trailer <laughs> of the pea gravel because we need the trailer for other things we do still need to put in a little bit more of the large gravel because we came up pretty high with these forms and that is because hopefully we're going to be preventing all the rain water runoff so i think joseph is actually working on getting some more of the large gravel here yeah there he is Good job, Joseph. This is a really hard job. This gravel is so big. Yeah. <laughs> I know somebody's going to ask, where is his shoes? Why doesn't he have shoes on? Do you have shoes, Joseph, that you could be wearing right now? Yeah, I do have shoes, but I don't want to wear them right now. I know, it's pretty nice out. Uh -huh. And look, the toes work great for shoveling <laughs> it on. <laughs> Here's an example guys of woven, heavy duty woven weed fabric that we put down about three, four years ago next to our compost bins here. And they're almost totally covered now with weeds. And I don't think there's any way we're going to be able to pull this out of here. It's just super heavy with weeds now and soil. So the plan is to eventually cement, do a cement pathway through here. So I think what I'll do is I'll just scrape off some of the surface 
I'll just scrape off some of the surface soil and weeds here, throw it back up into the compost bins, and then we'll probably put some cardboard or feed bags down on top of the weed fabric and then put some pea gravel through here. And hopefully that'll create a nice pathway until we're able to pour cement over this area. Caleb and Nate are taking their turn now. Well guys, we just had our lunch break and we have yet to get to unloading that pea gravel. We did a bunch more forming work and then also did a bunch of loads of the larger gravel this morning. So the forms are almost totally completed for the area that we want to tackle first. I think we still need a couple loads of the large gravel and then hopefully we can get to the pea gravel and we might be having some friends come to help as well, which should be awesome. So back to work. Alright guys, so our friends have been here for all of 45 minutes and this is like two-thirds empty already. <laughs> Many hands make light work. I'm so excited. This whole line has been done and almost the entire backyard. Just the sun's really bad right now so I'll have to get a shot of this later but look how beautiful. Yay! Look at this guys, we did it! With the help of our awesome friends. So those who have been following our channel for a while, you probably have heard us mention the Burton family. They were the ones that came and helped us today and I am just blown away by how much we got done today with their help. So thank you Burton family. So, so thankful. Ta-da! This is the new area that we just formed up yesterday and finished forming today we still have a little bit of pea gravel to put in here but all the large gravel is in place and we worked our way all the way to the other end of the garden here with the forms um, just have a little bit more to form up at the very end there along the compost and back over this way this whole row got done it's the one of the main um, wide pathways. It's a three foot pathway through the garden so we can get pea gravel, compost, whatever we need through the garden space. So then the part that blew me away I did not think we were going to get to today is this whole area where we have um, circle beds that we've surrounded with rock and it's almost completely done with pea gravel. Looks so nice. really happy to have this space done. <laughs> so here's where the pergola is going to go. We're ho hopefully going to get some cobblestone in here, build a pergola for a rose bush there. And then I do have an herb bed over here that's still not finished. This here is going to have cobblestone going through it, um, going both directions, and that's going to be an herb circle. For the herbs that like to go all over the garden, we're going to confine them there a little bit. Are you glad we got all the pea gravel done today? Yeah. I helped fill up, fill up that 
containers that they were using. And then also on the ground, there was lots of pea gravel that spilled on the ground, so I got out from under. Very cool. Well, thanks for helping. And you played a lot too, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining us on the homestead again today, guys. Um, if you have a favorite garden pathway that you have experienced with and have just enjoyed using in your garden, can you please share in the comments below? Thank you so much, as always, to our patrons who make these videos possible. We really appreciate you guys. Until next time, we pray blessings over you and yours. And whatever you do, do it with your whole heart. heart.